Hey, what's up everybody? Rob here and today's video we're going to draw out some more poses. So I figured I should probably warm up and uh, sketch out some poses and why not do that with you guys? So you guys can let me know, um, you know, if you think there's a certain pose you'd like to see and I'll do my best to try to draw it out. And what's up? So yeah, we've already got a few people. What's up, Son? What's up, uh, Russa Ar Abril? G GMA Matrix and Saliva Draws. I can't read, but yeah, what's up, everybody? Um, so yeah, so uh, I'm thinking we're gonna do some poses, and I also wanted to make sure to mention that uh, you know, Sketchbook Pro is now free, which I think is pretty cool. So you guys probably already know this if you're digital art fans and things like that, but yeah, they went entirely free. Hopefully, they stay that way. Uh, so now, uh, when people ask, like, what's a good free alternative, I can be like. You know, Sketchbook Pro, it's now free for everybody, which is nice. Oh, thanks, Marcos. Happy to be your teacher, man. That's nice of you to say. Uh, Aroya, what's up, everybody? OMG, hi. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, so, uh, so anyways, um, let me, let me do a little warm-up pose over to the side here. And you guys tell me uh, what kind of poses you might like to see. And, you know, like, all other li live streams if uh, there's something you'd rather see we can deviate but I just like to go in with a an initial idea of what we could do and poses are always something you should probably be doing every day uh, I feel like if I don't take the time to draw poses every day then my comic art tends to suffer uh, so I'm constantly trying to you know figure out different poses but I'll start with a basic warm-up shot you know Kind of established the eight heads tall model eight and a half i've been stretching these characters out more and more over time what is that one two three four five six seven eight eight and a half maybe nine I and mean, where the i feel like they're uh the more elongated the arms and legs are the more heroic the form uh, yeah, I could try to sketch an overweight person. That's a good idea. You know, I got to quit getting in the habit of drawing all superhero buff people running around. You need that comparison. So yeah, good idea on that one. Poses with twists. Okay. Combative poses like martial arts. Okay. So, uh, uh, please make a pose like Miles Morales. Um, yeah, so, so let me approach one of these at a time. Um, I think I should do the overweight character, so starting with that, and then uh, you guys can remind me because this is going to get pushed down the live stream. So basically, four heads down is where the lower uh, pelvis goes. I guess this is going to depend upon, you know, if you do extend it. I'm going to extend it to, what is that, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, it was eight. What am I doing here? I can't count heads. Let's add one more. At least a half, but probably a probably a full. But either way, about four, four and a half. I guess if you're going to add one, you're going to bring the pelvic uh, or pelvis down. But then kind of do a outward bend, knee, back bend, the upper femur, obviously largest bone in the body, and it's uh or upper femur, <laughs> just the femur, not the upper femur, and uh, but really it's longer than the rest of the leg down here, but uh. I don't know. I, I tend to like to even them up for my comic hero forms. I feel like if I make this overly long leg here and this shorter uh, lower leg, it's just, I don't know, something about it doesn't feel right when I draw. So I kind of shift that a bit. But you know, that's kind of part of it. You're going to shift things around based upon your style and what you want to see in your uh, character concepts. Elbows line up to the waist. Hands go roughly down to... Um, midsection of the leg upper feet you know upper femur again goodness midsection to the femur about midway mark or the other way to look at it is your wrists are pretty much aligned with your uh, lower pelvis and then just attach the hand so this is just a quick way to kind of you know map out this basic perspective i kind of like doing this off to the side because it gives us a um, template to work from anyways Yeah, let me know too. Is the audio good and the uh, the stream health good 
Like, is that you guys you know, notice any kind of lag or anything like that? It's like looking like it's lagging on my end, but that might just be visually and not functionally functionality wise. And that arm position's a bit weird. All good. So wheat, all good. Two all goods in a row, so we should be good. Uh, I study your work on Skillshare, and Udemy never attended a live session, so this is interesting. I have so many questions by Captain Ripley. Nice. Captain Ripley. Aliens, right? Um, yeah, so so glad you could be here, and thank you very much for supporting the Skillshare and the uh, Udemy um, courses. That stuff actually helps me do what I do here on YouTube and not worry about you know some youtube revenue that you know everybody's like dreaming of one day or whatever you know it's like really can't live off that stuff so luckily through the skillshare and the udemy stuff i am able to do this full time so thank you very much for that support it does help out so um uh, so yeah so fire away with questions i'll try to glance over at the screen and read them as i go and i just want to quickly i'll just quickly throw this pose in it's going to be a little awkward but like i said i like this kind of base mannequin to work from because you can just glance over and check proportions it's just a a good way to kind of feel out what you would consider being correct proportions for your character and then as you draw more dynamic and more exaggerated forms over to the side of the page again this becomes your kind of your um your guide in a sense you can just look over at this and go all right well i see over there roughly the arm would meet up here and you know, then you have to imagine it in a forced perspective or foreshortening, things like that. But yeah, we'll just say something like this. Got some weird feet on this guy. But there we go. Heads look kind of oddly shaped. I don't know what this bump is right there. He's got a bumpy head. Okay, so we'll say that this is our character just to start with, okay? Our base kind of warm-up sketch. And let's add a new layer over here. And we're gonna start with the, um, the larger body type, so let's do that. So the thing is there, generally the head's tall model is gonna shift a little bit. So let's go ahead and, we don't wanna make them too boring, so we're gonna, we're gonna put like a bigger oval here and I'm gonna jump past and I'm gonna use larger shapes for this character. So what I'm gonna do is get in the upper torso with kind of just this larger oval, kind of wedged out just a little bit. I'm gonna do a center line right down, you know, where the perceived middle of this character might be. And I'll have him do like this, I guess a wide stance, wider stance. I'm gonna give him a little shorter, stumpier legs. Okay, so that's what these little, you know, always remember forward bend, knee, back bend. Just kind of an easy way to get that uh, gesture in there. Always have the feet with a little bit different orientation. And what's this, this guy doing? Any, any suggestions here as I'm sketching this? What's this person doing? What is edge drawing? Uh, I think you might be, if I said that, forgive me, edge drawing like the perimeter maybe, the edge of the character, like silhouette. I don't, I don't know in what, what context that's being used if I said that, or you're just asking me definition of edge drawing. I wouldn't be able to answer that at the moment. All right, so if you guys don't give me any suggestions, force myself to sketch a pose this morning. Yeah, that's great. You should, you really should. You should probably, I always feel better when I sketch at least 10 poses. Okay, uh, you know, are you going to do that every single day? Maybe not, but I think that you get better if you treat it like, like a workout. One hand in the pocket, other one looking to a watch. All right, there you go. Good call there. So I'll call this one the one on the pocket because I already kind of positioned it on the hip. Or, you know, not a big deal. We'll just switch it. Bring it down just a little bit. Remember to make all your changes and adjustments right here. Okay, you're going to... You're gonna love yourself if you do. Uh, if you get better and better at making your changes here, uh, this is your idea stage of whatever you're doing. So he's looking down at his watch. The face looking down is as simple as a cross section there. You know, this arm is obviously a bit 
long though so the proportions are skewed a bit so maybe i bring this uh line in more chop all this off luckily we don't hear them scream and you know just like that we move that arm in so we're we're looking at proportions but we have to look past this and imagine you know what's going to fit on top is this what kind of character is this, this is like kingpin from you know spidey or whatever in which case he would actually have a smaller head so here's the other thing about drawing big characters you want the body to look bigger this is a this is the quickest way to do it you shrink his head just like in beetlejuice shrink the head also you know as you're doing something like this tilt it move it around check the orientation generally the chin hovers right over the center collarbones here you know what's this guy i doubt you're going to see his collarbones he's hacking on the poundage but um but you know just like that so then the next stage after you get this gestural kind of information in place and you say i almost feel like the head still needs to come down a little bit down and over something like that and so we got this gestural kind of pose in place and now we need to you know pack on the poundage so you know this varies depending on the type of artist you are and what your comfort level is you know i always suggest you know some cylinders for mapping out the next stage of it now you see i skipped that over here but i've drawn this forward facing shot i don't know hundreds of times at this point i don't i don't know how many but uh but maybe this pose not so much so i'm just gonna you know get in some basic forms kind of you know visualize where it's at um you know Maybe give him some pretty big shoulders. You know, I'm still gonna I'm still gonna get the taper in of like the forearm. I'll show that taper, that little skinny wrist attached to a big chunky kind of forearm. And in the pocket. Now I need to also make sure that I've placed all this correctly. I could obviously be off, you know, as far as did I put all this in the right spot? So you, a big part of this is being able to maneuver and uh, you know just to make adjustments on the fly so that if something's not correct, it's not a big deal. You just you don't get frustrated. You just start maneuvering your lines. But if you stage the work in this way where you are slowly building up to it, then you you know hopefully can, can save yourself a bunch of costly timely mistakes or time consuming mistakes. I'm just kind of sketching through it. Some big old feet. Is there any more suggestions? Let me look back over here real quick. Uh, I missed some. Let me scroll back up real quick here. Right, one hand in the pocket. We got that. Make him lift a person over his head. Well, we're already into this pose. We got to continue on. How to project 3D with thick as limbs instead of cylinders. How to project 3D with stick. Oh, I mean with lines, not stick. With lines as limbs instead of cylinders. I'm sorry, Blue Bot. I still don't understand what you're trying to say there. How how to project 3D lines? Um I have made the mistake of going for details too soon. Yeah, so uh so for sure, you really want to, you know, hold back on the detail, get the form in place, get the rough sketch going, all the ideas down. You know, one of the things I, I tend to to think is if you if you sketch long enough, you're going to find your idea. Okay, so so one of the things is sketch very lightly. It's actually one of the reasons why I like drawing in this particular software. It's got a very light, airy feel to the sketching process, so it doesn't blob down a big line. I'm, I'm you can see I'm using these very light. Um, Kind of angel hair lines in a sense because i'm still trying to figure out what i want to see here now as soon as i'm more confident in that then i can jump in and start you know really detailing or really dropping in line weight and things like that but i want to let that part come naturally i don't want to force it because if you force it you're just you start making some bad decisions and then you get like you know down and out about the piece you're like oh this isn't coming out good it's because you basically jumped the gun i mean not always but that's just one of the things to look for so let yourself just scribble and figure things out you know and like i'm always going to say if it's if it's not working it's not working you got to go to reference or something but uh but you can kind of find your way 
you know, it depends on where you're at, I guess, as far as how long you've been drawn and things like that. But you can generally find your way if you scribble long enough. Uh, not always. I mean, there's just certain things you need to pull reference because, you know, you just don't have a good enough idea of what it looks like yet. And that's okay. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, I don't know. It's funny how a lot of people think reference is a bad thing. Or they're not, you know, they're not a real artist. or so they're not being as creative or something like that. Um, and I think really just good artists um, get better at hiding the fact that they would ever use reference. You know, they put so much style over top that, but I, I study from reference all the time. Like these wrinkles and this clothes I'm going to try to apply. You know, I know that the wrinkles do something like this. And then you get these little bumps on the side. You know, that's kind of the pattern I memorized to do those. But it doesn't mean that I'll get as dynamic of wrinkles that, as I want. So if I look at reference, I'm going to be able to draw those. I'm going to be able to get that just right. Oh, where'd my lines go? It looks a little odd here. So constantly, you know, moving things around, twisting them, contorting them, whatever. And then after I get a pose that's, um, you know, relatively where I want it to be, then I'll take it to the next stage and start to refine this a bit more. But we'll say this is it. So let's go ahead and bring this over. I like working in the center of the page, so I'm going to do that. This will be a good time to flip it. Because even a pose as simple as this, and you can see there's a little bit of weird tilt there. Or who knows, you might you might have a better eye and you might have noticed it as I was drawing it. Or I struggle with that. Okay, let's read those real quick. Uh did you sketch She-Hulk? No, we got to finish this one. There's a difference from using reference to get better versus tracing, which doesn't support growth in any sense, or in my sense. Yeah, I, I agree, Captain Ripley. Now, I actually do say trace as well, okay? And, and this is going to seem strange at first, but I don't mean trace to do finished art. I mean trace to really just simply look a little bit closer at what you're studying. So I think that you should draw time interval studies where you... Look at one uh, thing, whatever it is, uh, something sitting on a table uh, or just on another screen of one of your devices and then draw it that way. And I also think that you should trace every now and then to really see how something looks, to really just trace it, take away the other layer or whatever and look at it and just study it. But again, not to use that for your finished work. Uh, even though some professions like storyboarding, they just, they want you to trace, they'll actually tell you to trace, whatever. But but that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is basically, like one of the things I think is, it's really important to trace through is, is uh, perspective. I think it's okay to do that because you end up looking at the scene. You know, scenes can get pretty complex. So if you're like studying this, uh, you know, this uh, New York cityscape, for instance, there's a lot to look at there. And you're just going to get so caught up in the details of it. Uh, and sometimes the, the thing that you need to start with, or all, pretty much all the time, you need to start with the underlying structure, the base information. So to trace through that, to see where all the per, uh, perspective lines converge, to really study the um, underlying, you know, forms and th things, you know, just the overall shapes that are there without all the detail, <clears throat> that's kind of the best way to do it, I think. So I do recommend tracing there, but again, just to kind of understand it, then put that away and draw from memory uh, and almost immediately put that away and then say, okay, I remember what was there. Now I'm going to draw it by just studying it visually and I'm going to redraw my own version. And uh, I think it always comes out a little bit better if you do that. And it always kind of opens your eyes to how different something really looks. Like I always thought it was strange how when you would trace a person, even if it was like a model or something like that, the trace version line work almost always looks really weird. That's why I think comics is so um, fun and, and so sought after because you actually have to distort the stuff 
not just style. I mean, style is one thing, and, and style is definitely the fun part about it. But uh, if you were to just trace a person, it almost doesn't even, a lot of times, doesn't even look like a person. Uh, it's not until the shading and the depth and all the detail and texture come in that it actually, you know, reads like what we're used to seeing. So I think there's a lot to be learned from even uh, just tracing uh, shapes and paying attention to all that and really, you know, gaining a bit more perspective on that particular uh, aspect of it. All right, that arm, that arm looks a bit weird, doesn't it? I'm just going to draw through it. We'll just call it style. Even if it's a weird arm. Hello from France. That's so cool. I love it when uh, somebody's in a different country watching. The world is just getting smaller and smaller. And some of it's foreign. I don't speak any other languages. I speak English and bad English. Uh, can you share in short about why you sketchbook or why you prefer it over Photoshop or GIMP and such. Um, yeah, so so I think I kind of touched on this a little bit already. I, I feel like Sketchbooks, uh, Sketchbook Pro um, has a very light, airy feel to the um, the interface for one. And then also it, uh, it seems to, I seem to be able to edit and draw just a little bit better. So so there's this 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 idea of like when you're using this stuff that it should feel right okay because if it feels right then you're going to stay in the zone right you're going to stay in the uh act of creating and you're going to feel a bit more comfortable with that okay so there's there's the feeling of the particular app or software or whatever uh making you feel like you're sketching and not trying to make something feel like sketching okay so i feel like they did a really good job with that as that pertains to, you know, using Sketchbook Pro to draw within. Now, when it comes to everything else, like say, all right, the inking stage is where I start to feel a little bit more like, eh, you know, it doesn't feel like inking, okay? It's not bad, it's, I can ink in it. And let me say this, all of them will do what you want. Every software out there from GIMP, Krita, uh, you just have to test them and see which ones feel right which ones react the way that you want them to react. Uh, ultimately, what, what you get the best artwork with, but after you finish the artwork, how do you feel about it? Do you feel like it could have been better? Do you feel like you struggled to do a certain thing? So for instance, uh, for me, Sketchbook Pro is probably right up there with being one of the best to draw on, okay? And second to that, or right up par with that, I guess, would be, Procreate. I love drawing with Procreate. I love the feeling of the Apple Pencil. I just feel like the whole experience is right there. It's pretty spot on. Uh, now you'll see me use Sketchbook Pro every now and then because I'm, I'm working off a of Wacom Cintiq right now. So this is another factor. I don't know if I got bad eyes or what, but like basically I like drawing larger. Uh, even when I drew comics um, or more traditional art, I always drew on big poster sized paper. I have a bunch of old artwork that's on these big sheets of paper. I just love the feeling of drawing larger. If I could buy a bigger Cintiq uh, at the moment, I would and I would draw even larger. So that's always gonna kind of pull me back here for that reason. But Sketchbook Pro has the most natural pencil feeling. Clip Studio Paint is the best all around, okay? So like for instance, if you want one particular program that does it all, then I would have to say Clip Studio Paint because it has the best, it's it's decent at penciling, it's good at penciling, it has the best inking, it has the best perspective tools, uh, it's got 3D models, it's, it's got all the best word balloon tools. So overall for comic production, is it, I'm gonna have to give it to Clip Studio Paint, also known as Mongo Studio. So hopefully you see what I'm saying there. They all do something a little bit different. Now, here's the other thing. I do most of my work now in Procreate on the iPad Pro. Why? Because I want to be portable. I want to I want to draw on the go and that's what I do. So so for that reason, I use that one the most. Uh it since they did the 4.2 update, the uh the brushes are fantastic. The inking is is probably starting to become my favorite. Uh it's still a little bit behind DSP in the sense that uh again, because I can use my Cintiq and I like to ink big and you know whatever. I mean, but 
it's pretty darn nice. I just did a uh, Spider-Man Venom piece you can check out on my uh, Facebook or DeviantArt. Uh, my DeviantArt, I actually got it where you can download the inks and color. You can download the pencils and ink it if you want. That's all just available. Uh, I've been making more of my art downloadable on there so that you guys can play around with it. You know, because it's always good to try to hone your skills by working over other artists. Like I've been inking, uh, uh, you know, I like inking uh, David Finch's work. I'm going to be, I'm going to try to ink some of uh, Jim Lee's stuff. been watching his live streams. Freaking awesome. Um, I actually did most of the Venom Spidey piece that I'm talking about while watching Jim Lee. Because it's like, you, you feel like you're working with a pro there. It's just fantastic. Um, but yeah, it, you know, it was going to be, somebody just put, is this Kingpin? It was going to be until I gave him hair. So it's Kingpin with hair, or we could take the hair off if you want. Uh, Captain Riley, yeah, fan of Procreate Me Too. I don't know if you're trying to be funny. I'm a fan of Procreate as well. Uh, I don't really like inking on Sketchbook because of the smoothing setting uh, that are not changeable. However, I've been playing with Clip Studio Paint, which seems to be better. Yeah, Clip Studio Paint is known for its inking. There's a lot of comic artists that, <clears throat> that use it for inking. Um, yeah, I, I would have to, again, I would have to say all around, if you were to pick one and done, I would have to give it to Clip Studio Paint. Unless you're a big iPad Pro fan and you're going to be portable, uh, you can use Procreate, but then you got to remember that your word balloons and things like that are going to be a, a bit, um, you're going to have to use some other uh, apps to help you do that. So they don't have word balloons yet. But I would say that's got to be next on their list because they, they're very responsive. So I've never seen a company so responsive when you like say, hey, you need this, hey, you need to do that. Why don't, why doesn't it have this? And next thing you know, they're like, hey, we just came out with an update and it's in there. So, <laughs> why not both hair and bald? I don't know. We could make a copy. Are you saying like right down the middle? We could say it's kingpin like in disguise, but. All right, it's looking at his watch. Oh, man. Big mistake here. I'm surprised you guys didn't correct me. His eyes are here. His watch is here. I guess I could fix that with like a. Um, Side pupil, like his pupils are off to the side a little bit. <laughs> Eight. I always do that. So here's one of my Achilles heels. I always like forget to direct the eyes or the fist or the punch to what it's really going at. It's such a silly thing to make a mistake on. So here we are experiencing my weakness in our. I'm easily distracted, folks. I got one foot bigger than the other. What am I doing? Let's fix this. And these pants are a slight bit tight for a big guy. Let's bring that out for the buckles. And I struggle on these wrinkles. I'll have to redraw those. His form is a little short. You could just extend it. Okay. Yeah, and I feel like this arm looks weird too. Like it's it's kind of forced out a bit. So let's go ahead and tuck that in as well. So this is another tricky thing. And this is where, again, I would kind of pull reference if I need to. Even take some pictures. And then just add some weight onto myself. Because I'm not quite this big. Not yet anyways. I keep eating pizza. I'm going to get there. But... Yeah, this is always a weird shape for me. I don't know why that is such a silly thing, but it should look like, I guess it could look like this part comes in front of the belly, maybe. I think that made it worse. Oh, and one of the one of the things I don't like on Sketchbook Pro, since we're we're on the topic of what I like and what I don't is it doesn't have nearly as many command z's so uh basically undoes it doesn't have as many undoes as any of them procreate has a massive amount and so what happens is it wouldn't seem like it's that big of a deal but you get used to using one of the other softwares then you jump over to the other software and you're like oh no i've been able to undo 200 times in that other software now i've got like 20 and uh yeah it's a really awkward situation so be aware of that okay so we might just have to pull 
reference on this one. Arm is looking really strange. Like, do I bring this line out more than over? That looks awkward. All right, who picked this pose? That's it. It's your fault. Whoever picked this pose, this concept. This form is a little short. You could just extend it. Are you talking about the one with the watch on it? It does look a little short, doesn't it? It's actually pretty oddly. It was a bit high, too. Okay, so now let's take that foot is really either this one's too large or the other one's too small. So let's break that down. I think it'd look cooler if it was Kingpin or somebody like Kingpin. So we'll just get rid of the hair. Here you tie. Does Kingpin wear a tie, anybody? Don't know. But if it was Kingpin, he'd definitely be wider. Kingpin's like this unimaginable width. I gotta shrink the head down again. I mean, if we base it off the game, anyways, I'm playing that Spider Man game. It's freaking just massive in that. All right, let's raise this back because it's looking pretty strange. Oh. What's uh, what's Dag San Juan? Think this is a great exercise you're struggling with it like we all do and working through this is a better example than if it was a perfect process well hey you found the right live stream then buddy because i struggle all the time the struggle is real yeah it's you know this is this is why i actually like the live streams anyways because i ask you guys like hey what what do you think i should draw and it puts me in the scenario of what say you know, fingers crossed one day I get to work for some big comic company, whatever, you know, they're going to tell me or ask me what to draw, tell me what to draw. And I'm going to have to come up with that. I can't sit around and just draw what I want to draw. So that's where it's really scary when you just sit around and you like work on your portfolio and you do the stuff you love. Like it's always this thing of you should draw what you love, right? I mean, that's, that's what you should be doing. But then if you do that too much, you may never challenge yourself to draw what you need to draw. And that means, you know, for comics or storyboard or whatever it is, it's going to be like, hey, we need you to draw this, that, and the other. Get on it. Let's let's see it. And, yeah, it's real easy to find yourself becoming a, a little too complacent and kind of doing just what you love to draw. And then all of a sudden you don't, you know, you don't get better. You don't challenge yourself to become better. So, yeah, these live streams are great for that. You guys challenge me. Apparently, I can't draw Kingpin without reference, and I didn't know that until now. Now I do. Next time, I will have a lot more reference for this character. But, you know, you can kind of fumble through it and keep moving things around. Not saying that it's going to come out great, but I should be able to get it to a decent level. If his gut really sticks out that much, but we'll we'll just roll with it. Oh. 
Got a weird nose shape there. Hold on. And really, for a shot like this, you're far enough away where you know it should probably just be drawn like shadows, not really drawn lines, anyways. Easier to draw shadows from this distance. And the infamous head shape is always going to throw me off. Like just that little bit of tilt, you know, where the you get a front plane change of the head and then you get the big dome going back. The ear is going to be higher because there's a downward tilt. I got to bring those brows down. Where's a big tucked in scarf, huh? Wilson, Wilson Fisk late for dinner. Nice. Uh, question, why is one sleeve down while the other one is rolled up? Darn you and your observation skills, Donald. I've been foiled. All right, I'll adjust the sleeve, my bad. No, that's good though. You guys are... Correcting me. Goodness, this downturn of the face is not jiving well either. He's got this big wide neck too, so bring the collar out more. This is tough because I always want to draw him muscular, <clears throat> but then uh, it's a combination, right? The weird thing is, too, with like clothes. Oh, yeah, we got to drop this one down. Let's have it pulled back just a little bit. Uh, the weird thing about clothes, too, is like they really shouldn't hardly ever show the muscles. But I don't know. I guess you see styles where they do draw the muscles underneath. And they just draw tighter wrinkles, but. Real clothing, you're generally never going to see muscles uh, for the most part through um, the character or through the uh, through the clothing, anyways. All right. Yeah, and I drew a tie. I'm just going to go ahead and leave that, but. It, not sure how the tucked in scarf looks. Uh, Max says, did someone teach you how to draw or did you teach yourself? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if I would say teach myself, taught myself, but basically lots of books, lots of videos. Um, I'm a YouTube fiend. I, I watch tons and tons of YouTube myself. So, um, I guess a little bit of everything. I think it would be boastful or something if I was like, oh, I just taught myself to draw. <laughs> I don't think I, you know, I taught myself anything like that. Like I'm not a savant or something. Uh, I just basically learned through doing and studying from other artists that I, I admire. So it came from first, you know, being inspired to draw and then drawing over and over again until I got good at certain things. And then like now realizing that I can't draw ink pen and I still need to practice that. That is still too big for ink pen. This is actually a really hard thing to draw for me. Is the deal. I mean, I would say his head needs to be like down to here. Like it just, he's got such a big body in comparison. And I feel like that's too low on the um, shoulder line. About right there help me out people anybody all right we're gonna try a new type of live stream where I send you guys the artwork and you work on it and send it back to me
In fact, if that works out really well, we'll just start producing comics and we'll call it Ram Studio Comics and we'll just keep doing it and going until somebody forces me to pay them, in which case we'll have to shut down the business and just kidding. Joking people. Maybe make his head less wide upper head. Yeah, I know what I'm feeling it too. That head shape is weird. Let me do this. This is another thing I like to do is I'll do I'm going to finish a quick pass on the other stuff and I'm going to come back because sometimes I feel like I need to not over detail one specific area or else I'll, I don't know, I kind of lose momentum in the process. So let me just try to figure out some of these other shapes real quick and we'll go back to that. And I really got to study clothing more because there's actually a lot of patterns that are pretty uh, consistent in clothing. I get these back and forth loops. These wrinkles that look like they kind of come around the side. See that on pants a lot. Knee would be more in there. Give me, folks. I am drawing really messy today. Remember those days where you're just a mess? Drawing a really messy style? Belt increase in the pants for formal look oh yeah you're right more like a, a line there and a belt here all right Let's see if i can squeeze a belt under this big old gut here <laughs> oh boy This reminds me of storyboarding right here. I'd be doing that. And they're like, oh, I, you know, you got to draw him wearing a belt. No, he needs he needs a man purse. Give him a man purse. You know, it's like you had to you had to draw on things so quick. You know, like we just have to show it to this board. So do it in like five minutes and send it back. Like, goodness. I do not miss that work. I do and I don't. There was times it was it was pretty fun. It was definitely challenging. But the good thing is, if you do ever do that, um, generally, if they need it faster, they're going to be a little bit more forgiving of the art style. Generally, sometimes they'll still manage to complain. It's like you gave me fifteen minutes. I, I don't know. Can't draw anything of great refinement and ability in 15 minutes. I don't know. Maybe Pac-Man. I could draw Pac-Man in 15 minutes. I could draw a hyper realistic Pac-Man in 15 minutes. That's about it. Okay. Yeah. Let's fix that head. He's looking weird. Weird dude. Um, so I'm going to flip it again just because Kind of helps you to keep pinpointing problems. That yeah, stance is really weird. That's not looking down at the watch. I need to adjust the arm over. Goodness. And that head is a range. So let's try to fix that. So I'm going to push that back a lot with the eraser. What is this for, Gary says? Uh, nothing, We're just, it was actually just supposed to be poses and then uh, I kind of got off into trying to prove that I can draw a king pet here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's not really for anything. You guys are welcome to like 
tell me to draw something else. I probably welcome it at this point, but I do feel like I need to figure out why I couldn't do this right. Um, so the face is just way off. Just going to drop that out. I think that's thrown off the shape as well. I'm going to start with the Andrew Loomis method, like I should have, like a good little artist. So, eyes are down. And this line down, find the chin. Big wide head shape. Jawline in there, find the ear. Get really quiet as I try to concentrate. I'm constantly like moving these lines around trying to find like where is the right line? Where does it where does it go? Like a puzzle. Trying to figure out that brow too, like where far down do I need those eyes to be? This is one of those things, I need to do a series of head studies because I've actually noticed this lately that it's real easy to go with the same kind of positioning. You know, getting used to drawing a three quarter shot, getting used to drawing lots of profiles, all the easy stuff. And then all of a sudden you get to these weird kind of angle shots. Um, like a person looking up and away is actually a really tricky one. So looking up, you know, can be easy with enough practice. Uh, but then looking up and away, you really have to shift the features around. I'm kind of feeling the, the pinch here a little bit where I haven't done enough of these slight downward angle shots with a bigger character. And yeah, it's kind of feeling like I'm forcing it. So that tells me what I need to study next. So, yeah, like I'm always studying. I'm just trying to find the next weakest link in my uh, chain, I guess. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. I get real quiet when I'm drawing too. Yeah, but the difference is I'm I'm live streaming, so I probably shouldn't get real quiet. But yeah, I get real quiet when I'm trying to focus. Give him more neck. Yeah, good call. Public enemy steel. Good to have you here. Make sure he's looking at the watch. I know it. Oh my god, you guys are giving me flashbacks from when I was doing storyboards. You guys are all like my agents now. What are you doing, Rob? He's got to be looking at the watch. The client's not going to approve this. You tell that client I said no. I'm just <laughs> yeah, that's probably why I'm not a storyboard artist anymore. I, you're not really supposed to speak your mind too much. All right, so let's see. Like, eh, that enough neck. I just feel like I can't give him this big, tall neck because he's a, a bigger, bulkier guy. I feel like this part needs to come up. Higher. Yeah, the arm's got to get moved over. Still doesn't look like he's looking down at his watch. So let's grab this piece. Form looks kind of elongated. Move that over, I would say to about there. And then let's grab this section. Rotate it. Bring it down just a little. 
I mean, we could probably just complete the shoulder even like this. I don't think that needs to move over anymore. And fill in good old love handle, which I don't have any of those. I don't even know what they look like. Really kind of messed up because I'm in like such great shape that I'm at a disadvantage when I need to draw out of shape people because I can't find any reference. I'm totally kidding. That's not true. I'm sure you guys know that. You probably see through my lies. All right. What else? Rob, have you read Figure Drawing Design and Invention by Michael Hampton? No, but I probably should. Actually, let me make a note of that. Um, yeah, you really recommend that book then? Michael Hampton. Why? I know that name. Maybe I've picked up one of his books before because that, that sounds really familiar. Does he have more than one book? All right, so just brush down the size. And I think I'm really going to have to practice drawing king kingpin. I thought this would be easy. Reality check. Well, this is about when I start figuring out ways to blame something else. Yeah, this, and my Cintiq is acting up and the, the pressure sensitivity is a little off. I must need a driver update. Yeah. Yeah, that's a ticket. <laughs> I'm kidding, it's me. You know, some days you just draw better than others. And other days you just keep doing it because you love it. The way it is. Now that line is looking odd. All right, I need some kind of narrative. Damn, Daredevil's late. Late for our brawl. Actually, I guess he's Daredevil's bow and Spider-Man's, right? Yeah. Okay. We'll just wrap that one up there. How about another pose? Since I, I hate to do this entire live stream about one pose um, that I suffered through basically. And it was really supposed to be poses and not trying to refine the character, but you know, I know what I need to study next now. I know what I need to work on. Any ideas for another pose, you guys? Uh, what do you do when you don't know what to draw for a panel and a comic? I need help. Um, well, one thing you can do, uh, Luke Crow asked this question, um, is you can actually, you can you can um, collage, you know, a scene. For instance, another good thing is to to look at movies and pause. Okay, pause the movie as you're watching it. Go, so go to something that's somewhat near the narrative of what you're trying to do. Watch it, but then pause it, and then and instead of just pausing and looking at, it, look at the, you know, structure of the scene where the characters are in. Um, you know, comparison to one another and the lighting and the, the background and things like that, study it. And so what happens there is that you're kind of getting like a, a fully finished version of a comic, you know, pause, there's your panel. But then if you kind of break it down and go, okay, what do I need and what don't, you know, trim the fat basically. What do I need? What don't I need? Uh, Cause obviously for comics, you're not going to try to draw like every scene looking like a movie, but uh, you want to simplify areas, but certain areas you want to capture. 
So that's probably where I would start. Netflix is fantastic because there's so many different things. You could just jump on there. YouTube, there's a bunch on YouTube. Just pause those frames, study them, do quick breakdowns of them. They don't have to be refined, just very quick, gestural, loose sketches of what's there. And that's that should be more than enough information to help you figure out a panel. Now, the other thing is this, uh, you know, write a script first or look at some scripts, you know, um, get used to reading those scripts and picturing what to see on that panel. Uh, and again, draw a very light gestural. Um, you know, let me get this off the page for a minute and I'll just do an example real quick. So, you know, you got a panel and the script is, I don't know. Uh, let me think of something that's not so basic or so everyday. I don't know. I mean, you get the very traditional things, right? You got like um, two people are, we'll, we'll do this. Two criminals have just like um, robbed a store and they just ran out into the street and um, they're holding the bags of money kind of thing, right? So, and it's a bird's eye view. Okay, so... So for instance, the first thing you would get in is like, you know, some kind of perspective of a bird's eye view. We'll say that this is just a street. That, and that's, you know, maybe, maybe it's right, maybe it's not, but you're not worried. In fact, a good thing is to draw from a further distance as well. So you kind of force yourself to not think about any kind of detail. So these two criminals run outside of a store. So you got a storefront of some kind. We'll just start with a basic, you know, rectangular shape in that perspective. We could probably bring this perspective, you know, bird's eye would actually be higher, but we'll go ahead and just say a little bit of an aerial shot. And so the person's uh, running out, you know, they're kind of maybe leaned over a little bit. So they've ran out, they're kind of on guard a little bit, like which way do we go now? Where's the car or something, whatever you think about the narrative. And you want to just throw this stuff in with very quick lines. It's like kind of how we started that, Want to be kingpin illustration uh but you know you got so you got one guy here you know you're not worried about the details but you can throw in little hints but everything that you can get from a glance from a distance it's still a thumbnail stage holding bags of money whatever and the other person may you know you want to make sure you don't just do a carbon copy of this one so maybe he's you know looking at this other person for like you know direction like you know what do we do now and you know he's confused and whatever so you could kind of point his head over here just use a little cross section to, to illustrate that again kind of leaned over shot or you know maybe not let's let to make them both leaned over let's go ahead and bring this guy so here's the other neat thing when you do it like this a change like that isn't a big deal all right so this is the other reason why thumbnailing is so darn important because as you're trying to figure out this idea, these thumbnails are so quick to edit that it just makes more sense, you know, so you can get ideas going because uh, they're not always great ideas. So some of them are just kind of like, you know, you're trying to find the idea. So thumbnails and rough sketches are the way to go for that reason. Wide stance, I don't know. But again, holding a bag of money, <laughs> that's a bag of money. I'll put a little dollar sign on there. And that's a horrible pose, but we'll just roll with it for now because I don't want to get caught up into trying to get just the right pose there. So we've got a storefront, we'll double doors, something like that. You can have a door still flung open. Maybe both doors flung open, whatever. You know, you could draw people in the background kind of scurrying around, like freaking out. And remember that. You know, at first you look at this and go, God, why would you add extra details back there? It's because those details are going to be like ink blobs almost. They're going to be, they're going to read, but they're going to be really quick bits of information. There's not going to be no detail right there. Uh, you know, maybe a, a bank name or a store name right there. You know, finish out the perspective. Maybe the getaway car, you know, screaming up to the front. You know, even with this, you just start with basic shapes, rectangles. Person driving as a silhouette, whatever. You know, don't overthink it. Don't try to make it some perfect car. You know, it's this is this is the focal point. I, mean, I guess all of it's kind of you know the focal's kind of in there, but 
But still, these other details get pushed back to obscurity. Couple more doors, couple people back here freaking out. You know, those are people, <laughs> just like that. And, you know, and so on and so forth. And if you start wanting to add in all the little details that make it a city, you know, you got some great, you got a manhole cover, you got some scaffolding up here, some, uh, you know, fire escape. Well, you probably wouldn't see that on the front of the building, would you? Maybe. But, you know, some other details to the building, whatever. And then as it goes back, they turn into silhouettes. You know, and some old shock lines around the characters. Maybe some dropped money. You know, so you could do all sorts of little things to help, you know, really make it work. But it all starts right there. And this is where, you know, you run it past a client. You, you make all your changes here. And I'll tell you, sorry if I'm veering off, but, you know, from poses. But basically, if you if you do your whole comic like this and make all your edits, as many edits as you can right there, you will thank yourself later. I'm just telling you right now because I've I've battled that with my own comic and right now I'm I'm going through and like changing stuff and I'm doing it all just like you see right there because it makes more sense and then I can go back and go okay where do I want the detail in this scene you know I think I just want it to look really good here and the rest of this I can kind of use some motion lines and you know kind of you know get a basic shape of a car silhouette some stuff back here make good use of my shapes of shadows stuff like that so. Yeah, again, it's easier to do that if you take the time to rough it out like that right there. And But yeah, back to what you were asking, if you look at, you know, movies and uh, commercials even, I mean, whatever, but you got to just look at stuff and pause it and study that. Oh, let's see. Yep, happy for sharing. Appreciate it, Gary. Um, what else? I was reading, oh, yes. You're right, done. Deal. I feel like now, wait, I feel like how well you draw Spider Man, you do an awesome Nightcrawler. Oh, thanks. Reading through these real quick. Yeah, so like Nightcrawler, let's see if I can, you know, do somebody that's like wiry and like Spidey, Nightcrawler, something like that. I'm not going to fully detail it as Nightcrawler, but I do want to get at least another pose in here. Because, uh, yeah, that was supposed to be the topic. Poses. So anybody like Nightcrawler or Spidey, I always, you know, just contort the form over. Uh, I always think it's like, uh, let me see here. I take and let's start with the torso first. So the torso kind of leaned over. And then the pelvis down here. This is the center of the body. And then, say, one leg up like this, one coming out. Have it tucked down, foot coming in this way. And we coming back like that. And then have one arm coming up. And one coming down. Make sure let's tuck this back a little bit because that looks too. I, I try to fight the urge to make everything too out to the side. Because <clears throat> it's uh kind of ruins the dynamic of it. Try out this way and back out and position the head somewhere in here I don't like that arm though hold on let's do this let's drop in the head and we'll figure out this arm maybe we'll just have it poking out to the side and the hand pulls like this something like that Okay, so there's our, our base mannequin, okay? And then let's just draw some form, but still keep it pretty gestural. Doesn't he have some weird toes? He's got weird toes. That's pretty bad. I don't think I've ever drawn him. <laughs> Horrible. I love that character, and uh, he was my favorite in X-Men, too. I thought that was a sweet depiction, but 
Didn't that, didn't that movie get a lot of negative? Like nobody liked it or something? Or that was, I thought that was one of the better ones. Maybe that was still rated one of the better ones. Yeah, he's got some funky toes. You guys check me if I'm doing these toes wrong. I think I am. Like that. And the tricky part here. Let me see, I gotta scroll down the uh, feed here. Yeah, you're welcome, Luke Crow. Happy to help. <laughs> Ninja Ninja Turtle feet. Yeah, he does have Ninja Turtle feet, doesn't he? All right, so I'll give him kind of. It seems like he's always doing something weird with his fingers too, but maybe that's just the way I like to draw hands. Maybe that's what that is. And. Yeah, I'm gonna keep this more about the pose of the character and not not draw another try to draw another refined character so much. But yeah, I try to get the, the leaned over thing going on. And you know, bring the chest down. And then with the stomach muscles, I try to overlap these and twist them at the same time a little bit so it's not too it's really easy to want to draw them all straight up and down and kind of eliminate some of the energy of the, the what the torso does. So it's like you want to twist that and you want to overlap those stomach muscles, I think. And I'm kind of jumping past this and just drawing in some anatomy just to save time. Time is of the essence. Flat in there. I'm kind of position the hand by drawing these little openings for the fingers. I'll just have another kind of weird hand pose. I'm almost thinking, I can't remember if he's got claws. Does he have pointed? He's got claws, doesn't he? Am I thinking more like somebody like Beast? I know he's got a tail. And the tail's going to come from down lower and then up. Like that, maybe. Hold on, I'm going to have to pull reference. I don't remember what he's looking like. What he looks like. Forgive me as I type this into my phone. Actually, you know what? No, I'll use my, my iPad. One second. Uno momento, everybody. As I've tried to remember what Nightcrawler looks like. I actually don't think I've ever drawn this character. It's sad. Yeah, he's such a cool looking character. Alright, so yeah, he's got three fingers, two toes, at least with this version. The other thing, it's like I gotta sit here and look at different versions because there's so many different, uh, because there's so many different versions. I'm gonna make sure that it's not just somebody's poor adaption of them. Okay, it's got some pretty wavy hair. OT, it looks like.
I gave him too many fingers. Actually, this one's right. He does have three fingers, so this one's that one's done. I don't have to add any more fingers. And probably shade this arm. I'll just tuck it back there a bit more. It could probably go a little bit lower. And this one, I could just bring one finger out here, another one out here. And then his thumb. Oh, I like that. Thumbs are tricky from this angle for me, apparently. And he's got a bit of a pointed tail. All right, so there's the rough uh, sketch. Let's hand back and see if, eh, it's kind of a weird pose, but I think I can make it work. I'm gonna have to adjust some proportions and maneuver some things around, but that's why it's a rough sketch. And let's see. Actually, I don't know why, but my, uh, my erase on this is kind of jacked. So I'm gonna do it this way. A little bit quicker anyways. Yeah, he's very thin and wiry. Tail could be longer. He has two toes and three fingers. Got it. Thank you, Osiris. Or Osire. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, Public Enemy says, did you know Nightcrawler as originally was going to be a member of the Legion of Superheroes at DC, but was rejected. Oh, no, I didn't know that. That's wild. A little, little comic history there for us. Yeah, that stuff's always great to find out <clears throat> or learn about. All right, so let's, uh, I'm just going to try to throw a quick rendering style over this and see if I can make sense of it. Make some adjustments on the fly here. Sometimes you can fake the anatomy. I'll fit an arm back there. Rip cage. And a picture of him being more like a spidey type size, right? You know, I tend to draw Spider-Man overly muscular. And the style is definitely more more the skinny type, which really, that's who it, you know, that's, the storyline fits that so much better. It's always a younger cat, you know, it should be skinnier body type, but I just always tend to draw too many muscles. On almost everybody. Apparently, I think everybody needs to lift weights. All right. Can you speak French, Robert? Uh, oui, oui. No, I can't. French fries, that's the only French I know. French fries, and they're delicious, and I thank you for them. <laughs> I go off to bake a cake and Nightcrawler, this is going to be good. Thanks. Thanks for rubbing it in our face that you just went and baked cake. While all of us are cakeless. How dare you? How dare you? You sleep at night. Probably with a delicious piece of cake. Sorry, right, I'm not implying that you sleep with cake. That would be rude. Um, how do you study human anatomy? Um, just 
one part at a time. I just I go for areas that I'm not too you know knowledgeable on. Like uh, like lately, I've been studying shoulders a lot because shoulders are for me so easy to get wrong. And uh, so yeah, so I've been studying shoulders a lot, and I'm starting to get it. But it's just there. You know, the funny thing about any of that is you can draw it well from one angle and one kind of you know one flexed perspective i guess one way that it works but then the muscles work so so differently in different you know positions different uh actions so yeah it's just you start doing the math and it's like goodness you got to draw it from a lot of different ways a lot of variables but you know some of it's some of it lends to other portions you know you'll learn one thing and it kind of makes sense to another and things like that but um but yeah I, I realize that i need to be better at my like my actual terminology i've been studying that more and uh studying from my um uh, my anatomy books so because i'd like to teach some lessons on dynamic anatomy but i can't do that if i'm not you know, I got to know what I'm talking about, right? So I can't help others with it as much if I can't really, uh, you know, know all the muscles, where they end up, how they work, things like that. So I'm trying to beef that all up. But I did find a great resource online, and I'll have to share it with you guys. Uh, unfortunately, I don't remember the name of the, the site, but I will dig it up. I, I bookmarked it on one of my systems, so I just got to figure out which one. And uh, what it is, is it's a, uh, a 3D turnaround of the body, and it labels each muscle. Uh, and you can rotate it, you can add and remove anatomy on it. So it's pretty amazing. And uh, yeah, it was like the best I found. And like I said, it, it labels every muscle just simply by clicking on it, and you can rotate it. So it's, I would say it's pretty superior to my anatomy books in that way. You know, because with my anatomy books, I only get one particular angle, or maybe a couple angles, but not every conceivable angle. That's where 3D is, is so helpful. Yeah, plus I like the site. It wasn't like a, check this out, oh, you like this, buy this, buy that, you know, some spammy site. It was actually just a really helpful educational uh, site. Again, I'll have to find that and share it in one of the videos. You guys can see what I'm talking about. Unless anybody here knows a similar one and you can share that link. Yeah, good, uh, good one by Philosopher Doom there. I found that studying MMA and cage photos are awesome for reference. You know what I found myself doing uh, yesterday because I was studying the back, back anatomy? Uh, for punch poses because you know it's like most punch scenes you're gonna have to draw some back anatomy and uh what's great for that is watching uh, uh <clears throat> excuse me watching boxers and then pausing the shots so i found myself watching uh lomachenko which i didn't even know about this guy but man he's an amazing fighter and uh he's really quick and you know he's a pretty cut dude or whatever and and the lower uh, feather weights or whatever they are the lower weight classes they're more cut so it's great for that so uh, you you can see like all the muscles react as they throw their punches and stuff so but yeah it's really a fantastic way to reference just look up some of those videos and as they throw those punches just pause and uh, yeah the back anatomy is probably the trickiest I think for me anyways uh, for that type of you know action and uh yeah I, I was drawing some pretty good uh, back anatomy from it so you know because like the back when it's on an angle it does this it comes down from the neck comes out you get this dip this diamond shape and it comes out it goes like this so here's the trapezius comes down to the shoulder you know, it does like this you got this you know your shoulder blade and but it's kind of tricky like from the and then from this other side you get like that shape again going the other way. So the diamond's here, or the shoulder here. Yeah, the back is a really tricky thing to draw. The, the latimus dorsi or whatever is like this. You know, stomach muscles from the side will dip in the back. You know, so 
again, it's it's one of those things that that's probably not the greatest example, but I was feeling more confident with it after watching those those boxing videos. Because you know, they work on their backs a lot. A lot of your power from a punch comes from your back. You know, the twist in your side, you push off your leg, all that, but it's a lot of the power from your punch is your shoulders and your back. So yeah, so at any rate, sort of deviating there, but yeah, when you said that it made me think of my uh my studies from yesterday. And that's really, I think, what you have to do. You just have to constantly, if you're going to be good at anatomy, you just have to constantly study it. I mean, I, I do anyways. Maybe some people just know it and they can see it in their, their brain box and it all comes together, but I have to constantly study it. And revisit it, redraw it. Because toes, is toes pointed? Yeah, all right. All right, and then outfit-wise, what's this guy got? Uh, Liano says, uh, love the videos, wish I could stay. Yeah, no worries. I mean, these these videos get long, and uh, yeah, always repost after I'm done, so no worries there. And yeah, good one from Public Enemy. Check out Bart Sears' bubble muscle technique. Totally feel you there, man. That, that dude, his work back in the day, I actually saw a spawn that he did way back in the day. Uh, that dude knows anatomy. So yeah, if you want to get better at anatomy, definitely check out Bart Sears. Yeah, Floss for Doom. Yep, a lot of a lot of various moving muscles in the back. It is insane. Like the back is is really easy to get wrong, you know. And plus, it's like this thing of like when you're drawing, it's real easy to get in the habit of just drawing all these forward facing characters. The, the majority of the time. You're going to be drawing them from the front so that's kind of what happens like you you weaken your ability in a sense because you're drawing the same thing you're drawing forward facing characters that's one of the reasons why you go to draw a face like this angled shot where it's like just the cheek the jaw that comes up i saw jim lee doing this the other day and it made a lot of sense he's like a lot of people struggle here with this and i'm probably going to struggle myself trying to do this and they always want to start drawing the nose and the mouth and the, you know, they add all this and it immediately doesn't look like the shot they're going for. Sometimes you have to just omit bits of that information. You know, bring the ear up more up to here and get the back of the ear in there. So it's, but we don't draw this as much. So what happens is it's real easy to, again, kind of want to start putting a nose in here where you really don't need it, where it basically would take away from the angle that you're trying to reach where the character is looking more away this was a bad example but but yeah so that was just like one of those things where you know drawing the backs of the character um often feel more difficult because we spend so much time drawing them from the front and getting all these different poses going from the front and then all of a sudden we're like wow i can't draw the back of uh my character and so now how do i tell a story because they can't always be facing camera Got like these pointed things over here, like that. I was trying to look at a picture here and see a suit design that I, I'm realizing I've never drawn, which is crazy. You guys are going to force me to do a uh, a Nightcrawler fan art piece now so that I can redeem myself from this poor drawing. I don't know what he's doing with his hands, but we'll just roll with it. We did it live. Just, <clears throat> just remember that. We did it live, folks. Put the thumb in. I don't know what the what he's gonna do with that hand. What claw somebody? And he does have some big gnarly fingernails, doesn't he? Maybe he is gonna scratch some face. Who knows? In the shot I'm looking at now, he's got a lot more of a wild hair, dude. So I could really bring this out. Got more of a pointed chin. 
Okay, let's see if I can just bring the face down. Maybe that'll help it a little bit. Nope. Thought I had the racer there. I did not. Okay. And yeah, his tail's like massive, isn't it? This is always good. Like, I just did that picture of Venom. I like how, you know, by him having that big tongue, it just allows you to add more design into the shot and play around with some concepts. Like that. He has more of an elf look, yeah. I appreciate you guys bearing with me. Like, I didn't really plan on doing as much finishing. I was going to do more poses, but it's good to challenge myself. You know, it's it's real easy. Like I said in the, previously, it's real easy to. You know, for me, I would just always draw probably Spider Man, Venom, the Hulk. You know, some of the base characters that I I love to draw. Um, but you can't do that. You know, you got to mix it up and you got to show some range or I don't know. Are you ever going to draw for comics if you can't? If you can only draw a few characters, if you can only draw a few poses. You know, you got to vary it up greatly. Take this kind of V's down right through here. And then all this is kind of blacked out right through here. I'd probably just make this solid and come back with a a white out kind of effect. Which is cool because it saves like a ton of time. Let's see this and this is like that suit. Motion lines jumping down on somebody getting ready to give them a scratch of their life. <laughs> Take somebody's eye out with those claws. Okay, so what else do we got here? Let me read through a couple more of these. We're coming up on an hour and a half, so I better I better bring this one to a close. Um yeah. Gesture drawing? Hmm. It's supposed to be. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I know it was a little bit strange, but we kind of did, let's see here, we kind of drew a back and Nightcrawler. I actually don't mind that one. I think I could refine that and make that look okay. I'll erase the back here. We don't need that. And let's just increase the size of the eraser, Rob. It's way faster. Okay, and then, oh, a little, I forgot about that little scene we did there. And a really bad kingpin. Is that the last one I did? It was, wasn't it? Goodness. Yeah, that does not look like kingpin. So, there you go. A poorly drawn kingpin and a halfway decent nightcrawler. Let's just go with nightcrawler. This one will be the... Uh, image for the live stream even though that's a pretty weird hand and pose but you know whatever it was live i'll get better oh and then donald comes up with another great pose someone sitting on a throne with one leg down over an arm of the chair yeah i'm gonna have to bring this one to a close i gotta i gotta take care of the little guy hang out with my little buddy the next generation of artists, Romano, Roman Marzullo. So yeah, so at any rate, I thank everybody here for bringing, uh, bringing themselves to the live stream, being part of the live stream. I appreciate the support of the channel. Uh, yeah, John, Jonathan uh, says, we'll do it live. I love that video. Um, 
But yeah, if you guys uh, got any great ideas for new content, let me know. I'm always searching for what to do next to keep the channel moving forward. I appreciate you tuning in and watching this. And uh, yeah, I can't thank you enough. So as always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.